Hello, I am Katie Che. I'm an architect and I am also an assistant professor teaching stream at the University of Toronto, Daniel's Faculty of Architecture, Landscape and Design. A Daniel student is presented with many opportunities to learn and immerse in architecture. They are taught in both lecture classes and design studios. They learn to analyze, they learn to synthesize and conceptualize project objectives. They learn to research, codify information. They learn an array of computer software that help them represent their ideas and designs in an architectural graphic language. Students make physical models with paper and card stock. They have access to our wood and metal workshops. Uh, they can also build digital models and have access to our digital fabrication lab with CNC machines and 3D printers. Daniels itself is housed in an award-winning, architecturally compelling building. And Toronto itself is a catalyst to explore all the new buildings being constructed everywhere you look in the city. I think Canada has a lot of underappreciated architecture. I think we have a remarkable collection of modern architecture right across the country that deserves to be studied and experienced by both citizens and visitors. We also have a lot of accomplished Canadian architects who have left indelible marks in our cities, but who are unfortunately not widely recognized outside of Canada. I'm, I'm going to speak again, going back to Daniels, the Daniels faculty, we have a lot of international students and some stay in Canada after school and some return to their home countries after their education here. As much Canadian architecture they may be introduced to while here, the school is about preparing them with the tools they can use to apply from their studies to be analytical and critical thinkers of space no matter where they are. And so I think in that sense, Daniels is more a global school than a local school. And I think there will always be a need to study architecture. Humans will always need spaces to sleep, to eat, to work, to rest, and even with new ideas and new behaviors of how we use spaces, as we have all learned in this pandemic, there um, will always be new spaces that will still need to be studied, understood and designed. I have an interest in researching housing, more specifically multi-unit housing typologies. I like to explore housing through different cities at specific times when housing had the ability to build and shape cities. I want to know how a multi-unit housing typology developed, how it evolved and how it defined the city, how the inhabitants lived in the typologies and how the typologies correlate in a contemporary context. I have looked into many different multi-unit housing typologies all over the world. And one case study is the Toronto High Rise in Toronto from 2007 to 2017, and really still very present today. Um, and I thought the presence of this ubiquitous mostly glass, high-rise tower typology in our city is worth investigation. And it has become quite an architecture phenomenon. I have taught this interest of mine as a course at Daniels, and it has been published as a book called Multi-Unit Housing, 
in urban cities from 1800 to present day.